Good morning guys. I have not filmed a tech video in a while. I actually don't remember the last tech video that I posted. Um, obviously you can find it on the YouTube channel. Yeah, I've not filmed a tech video and I apologize for that. So today we are going to do a high-end balls to the wall build on PC part picker. I'm going to go over all the parts with you guys and then we're going to go over why I chose that thing like that. I apologize if my voice is a little bit messed up for whatever reason my throat's kind of like jacked up for some reason. I'm not sure why. I think it was just because yesterday I was doing a whole bunch of stuff and yeah, I don't know. But yeah, let's hop onto my computer. Oh, we're obviously on my computer. I'm gonna start with CPU. I also apologize, I am a little bit tired. I uh, woke up really early because my son decided that his blankets were messed up and he needed somebody to go in there and fix them for him. And that was at 3 a.m. Didn't fall back asleep, so sorry, I'm uh, a little bit tired. So right now, Intel 12th gen, the 12900K is actually the best CPU that you can get. I believe it beats out the 5950X in certain areas. The 5950X has a higher performance clock. 12th gen, 12900K has the same core count and let's see, yeah, I mean it's, it's performance boost clock is better. Um, on the 12900K 5950X. So we're gonna go with this 12th gen Intel chip, the uh, 12900K, which is currently the best CPU that you can get right now. It does put out a ton of heat, so we're gonna need something that can cool that. I definitely wouldn't go air cooler. I would definitely go with an AIO for this. So we're gonna go to this and we're gonna do 360 yo i don't really have a budget set for this so we're just gonna kind of wing it i think as far as this one goes i actually really like the look of this cooler i think it would work really well and it's kind of it's all black that's what i kind of go for but honestly you can go for any 360 aio that's from a brand that you know is really good like corsair or uh lian lee or something like that so i'm gonna go with this one we're gonna go to ek and we're gonna go with this 360. I generally go for like stealth builds, just all black, but I was actually pretty indifferent about what I wanted to do for this one. So, you know, I guess we're kind of going all black again, maybe with some RGB stuff like that. So, um, we're gonna go for, so something to think about is right now, DDR5 is still pretty expensive and it doesn't really offer a lot more performance when it comes to most tasks. I mean, I'm assuming if you're gonna use this PC, you're gonna be using it for like Blender, 3D modeling, um, you know, any kind of like crazy high-end work that you'll be doing. You're definitely going to be using this build for something that is for more than just gaming. I think the, the tough thing that a lot of people think is that they wanna future-proof their build. And so by doing that, they make sure that they just buy super high-end parts that really don't offer more performance in the tasks that they need. Like I have a 3060 Ti and a 5600X and you know, I'm editing, I'm just um, web browsing, doing other various things, 3D modeling, stuff like that, animation work. And it works perfectly fine for me. And I also only game in 1080p and I have 144 Hertz monitor. So I feel like if I were to put like a 3090 in here, it would just be super overkill. It would help with my other tasks, as I described earlier, but as far as just raw gaming performance, it really doesn't offer more. And I mean, it really depends on the type of person you are. If you have the money to buy a 3090 and a 12900K, by all means, go for it. And you know, you'll definitely be able to keep that computer for years and years to come. But if you're somebody that's just trying to, you know, play esports titles, stuff like that, Anything that is, you know, kind of middle ground will work perfectly fine. So we're going to go, I, I don't, I just really don't think DDR5 is a good call right now, um, at least for the next couple of years. I know that once it does start to become more integrated into like games and software and stuff like that, it's obviously going to make more sense, but right now it really doesn't. So we're gonna go for this. It is a Wi-Fi model. It's the Asus ROG Strix Z690, and it has Wi-Fi as well. If that's something you need, you could go cheaper if you want. I mean, there are obviously cheaper boards, but I think this one will work really well. So we're gonna go for this one. Uh, we're gonna go to memory, and I'm thinking you're gonna be needing like 32 gigs or 64 gigs if you're 
a hundred percent sure that you're going to need 32 gigs i would just go for a 2 by 16 kit so you'll have 32 gigs total and then if you need 64 gigs you can just bump it up right there so I don't really care too much about cheapness. I know that these are pretty expensive. $200 is a little bit much when you can get 2x16 for 32 for $100. So you're paying another like 80 bucks just for an extra, just for RGB, which I think is not the best call. This Corsair Vengeance LPX is going to work really well in our build. So I guess we are kind of doing an all black build uh storage wise so i'm i personally am not somebody that needs gen 4 speeds let me do anything faster that i'm doing currently so i've always gone for gen 3 i know at some point we're going to need more gen 4 drives and stuff like that but i'm thinking we're going to go for this 980 pro it's two terabytes it is a little bit more expensive but you are getting gen 4 speeds and it's just, it's a really good drive all around. Samsung makes really good drives. I actually have a 980 non-pro in my PC right now. It's one of the higher end Gen 3 drives you can get and it works really well. So we're gonna go for this one. For case, I don't wanna do video card yet. Um, I was actually looking at this. So they have the O11 Dynamic Mini. Um, I like the Airflow version. I don't know why they don't have it on PC Part Picker. I choose the Airflow version of this case, but they honestly both perform exactly the same. So we're gonna go for Lee and Lee Mini. And we're gonna go for, we could go for the black version or the white version. Let's go for the white version. It is a little bit more expensive. Um, it is $129, but I mean, I, I like the case. I actually used to not like the case. I didn't really like the blockiness of it, but it kind of grew on me. So I'm thinking that we're going to go for this for our storage. We already did that. I think if you're going to be using this for high-end gaming and you need just more storage as well, I think getting like a four or eight terabyte hard drive would help in the long run. So I actually want to add that in as well. Um, video cards. So there's no real point in getting a 3090 unless you know for a fact you're going to be using it for everything that you need it for but currently i'm thinking like a 3080 3080 ti will be perfectly fine in this build so we're going to go to we could get this 3080 it's the 10 gigabyte model that could save us some cash um, but i think we should go for probably this 3080 the 12 gigabyte model evga makes really good graphics cards and i think in the long run just as a company they're just going to go just so far so personally i would just go for evga asus um any like name brand that you've really heard of a lot and that people have good things to say about customer service i think that as far as like graphics cards go customer service is one of the biggest things because graphics cards fail it just happens to everybody and you can't do anything about it it's just at some point your graphics card may die or it, it may be doa as soon as you get it so you know that's something to think about and if you buy it from a company that really doesn't have good customer service i mean you just might be kind of shit out of luck or they might say you know you tampered with it even though you didn't and it just becomes a major issue so that's just really something to think about when you're buying a graphics card i currently have pretty much all of my graphics cards are from asus uh, asus has really good customer service evga has good customer service i've heard really terrible things about gigabyte which has never driven me to buy any gigabyte product but definitely asus or evga are really good card manufacturers so right now we're gonna go for the power supply we have a 3080 in there i wouldn't put anything less than 850 just on everything that we have uh pc part pickers recommending pretty much like 750 to a thousand watts uh silverstone i've heard decent things about so i think we're gonna go for them it's a thousand watt power supply it doesn't show the price so i actually don't want to use that i think i mean i wouldn't put anything less than 850 in here so let's just put an eight, 850 watt power supply in here the main thing is so this current build um is going in a mini case and so you're gonna need an sfx power supply so i'm thinking we should go with 
this 850 watt cooler master it has white sleeved cables and it's going to look really good in our pc so it is a little bit more expensive sfx power supplies are generally more expensive this should definitely work so i'm going to go over the parts we have the 12900k the ek aio it's the that's the 360 mil one it should fit in our lee and lee case uh, if it doesn't, you can go to the 240 mil, but that would be a little bit tight. We're gonna go for the 240 mil. It should be fine in the long run. Um, if you do look at your temperatures and notice that they are getting a little bit high, that is something to think about and you can always swap it out. Um, recommendations would just be a big air cooler or a 280 mil AIO. Uh, anything like that will work perfectly fine. Uh, we have the Asus ROG Strix Z690 with 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. Uh, we have the four terabyte Seagate Barracuda Compute slower version. You can get the faster one. It's at 7200 RPM. So it's really up to you. I generally just go for these ones because I use them as mass storage and I don't need fast hard drives. Uh, we have the two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro and then the 12 gigabyte 3080 from EVGA, the Li and Li O11 Dynamic Mini in white, and then the Cooler Master V SFX Gold Rated Power Supply. So honestly, I mean, this is gonna be an amazing build. It is a little bit expensive. It's about three grand, but if you think about where graphics cards prices were a couple months ago, this is just crazy for the fact that you can build this for under $3,000. I mean, even budget builds went up to like $1,500 and that was for mid-range parts. So when you're thinking that, you know, for $1,000 more, $1,500 more, you can get a super high-end build that will last years to come. I mean, that's just, you know, crazy to think about. But yeah, I mean, if you guys have questions, you know, this build is just, you know, it's solid all around. It will play everything at 4K. You can play at 1440p easily and 1080p is just going to be just absolutely dominated by this PC. But yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, push the bell button, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.